I'm Chris Murphy. And I'm Jennifer Logan. And, and we're, we're the, the Community, Community Theater, Theater Heroes. Heroes. We host a weekly podcast where we interview theater companies, actors, casting directors, playwrights, composers, and other theater artists to give our listeners helpful advice, tips, and insight for their own careers. And life in general, because we believe that live theater has the power to make the world a better place. Hey all you CT heroes out there, welcome to episode 16 of our podcast. This is our Theater in Therapy episode. We interview Artistic Director of Playback Theater, Sarah McWilliams. Sarah talks about some really interesting things such as storytelling, theater in therapy, and what her company, Playback Theater, does. We hope you enjoy this episode just as much as we enjoyed creating it. Welcome to the Community Theater Heroes podcast. Are you? You're pointing at me. Well, I right. mean, I don't know. You were leading it, man. Man, I, we don't every time. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Jennifer Lowe. Yeah. You couldn't even say your name right okay. then. Okay. You're oh, like Jennifer. That's, that's weird. think about it. Was it was a late Logan. night. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's Jennifer. You don't care about her. Okay. But I'm oh, Chris oh, Murphy. <laughs> right. uh, um, right. And we have a very special guest with us today, Sarah McWilliams. <laughs> Say hello, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. <laughs> oh. oh, she gets us. We should get those sound effects like wah, radio station. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> hey, Sarah. Hi. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Literally. They just shook hands with us. I'll do it I too. Sat down. We're really <laughs> doing that. Cool. Um. <laughs> What's Sarah do? What, what are you doing here, man? Uh, in this room or yeah. in the world? Like, <laughs> no, like the proverbial. What are you doing? Um. I still don't know how to answer that. Um, in in the in the world, I am a graduate student at Portland State in the School of Social Work, and um, on my off time, I am the artistic director of Playback Theater and a wife and nice. a human. Oh, okay. She wears a lot of hats. Fair. Not, so not right hats. now. No, not she's wearing right now. Let's be literal. It, she looks ridiculous. So what like is Dr. what Seuss. is playback theater? Like, okay, so explain it to me like it's the first five minutes that I've ever heard about it. Right, I honestly have not found a great way to explain it um, that really captures what it is. So here's the bad explanation. So if you said to me, "What is playback theater?" I would say, "Playback theater is a theater where uh, people come and they share stories from their life, true stories, and then we play it back for them." Oh. On the spot, which is bad. Like that, that's not a good way to explain it. Okay, so because that's like, what it actually is, sort it's like of short form improv based on a real. So there's short forms, there's long forms, but but I just can't seem. I, I I have not yet found the right way to capture it in words. But the I guess a better way to describe it is, indeed, audience members come and they share stories from their real life and then like they just stand up and shout them out uh no it's just, it, part of the format well i guess they could that's another way to go about it now you got me thinking about formatting a show yeah. but anyway no, you're welcome. i like that Aren't just sh- a shouting okay. portion i dig that yeah i'm gonna build that I'm in a shouty somehow. person we like try and tweak it every you know a little bit to mix it up but um you know through the the mechanisms and the the uh You know, we're walking people through sort of a process, but basically audience members will share stories, sometimes just snippets, words, uh, short sentences based on a prompt or whatever. And then there are portions of the show, the bulk of the show is um, someone will come up from the audience and sit in um, what's called our teller's chair by the conductor, who sort of is like the MC, And they will share a story from their real life. And then... There's four actors on stage. There's a musician or two sometimes. And um, we'll take that material. that So that becomes the script, right? And then in the moment, we'll take that material and we'll um, do all kinds of amazing, magical <laughs> things with it. Um, so it's not a strict, literal playback because that's pretty boring. Um, we'll mine the story for what someone maybe didn't say. We'll mine the story for... Um, p- 
putting into theatrical language and interpretation their body language, their tone of voice, what they did say, what they didn't say. Like, it really sort of becomes... You can't see what I'm doing with my hands right now because it's, uh, it's a podcast, she's but like yeah, she's sort of, yeah, the, the, the story is the raw material. And then we, we take that and really just kind of stretch and play with it while it still very much honoring that person. Is it, does it tend to be more dramatic or comedic or does it, totally does it depends. Sounds like it could be both. Totally yeah. depends. It can be both. Nice. There aren't a lot of like hard and fast rules. I would say one in a story is that um, we always honor the teller and we don't make things up. Mm -hmm. So if a story doesn't have an ending, it doesn't have an ending. If it has a bad ending, then it has a bad ending. If it has a good ending, it has a good ending. We don't we don't invent things. Mm -hmm. We we don't invent facts. Um, when you say uh, honor the teller, do you does that also maybe mean like they're the hero of the story or you don't like, they're not the butt of a joke or does that make sense? Yeah, or? right. So honor the teller is, um, we, we really do kind of consider their stories pretty sacred in, in the moment and then in our hands. And so, um, we try to give back to that teller the, the most honest human quickly crafted piece of, of, of theater that we possibly can. Um, no, we don't, we don't tear anybody down. We don't make anybody the butt of a joke. Um, we don't, uh, we don't rescue the story. We don't rescue them in the story or other characters in their story. We don't make up facts. Um, you know, does it, get, it, it can it get pretty dark? Oh Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Is it sort of like a, a, a therapeutic way to try and go about it? Is yeah. that kind of what this is? Like, uh, it can be. I, I think we, we don't really advertise it as therapy because it isn't. That's not our contract. Our contract is theater, right? Meaning... You want to be entertained. It's yeah, fun. I mean, well, we this, this is a very particular kind of theater. If you know about any other true story kind of theater, what is there? In Portland, there's a few different kinds, and then there's the moth, and... You know, I don't. I don't. And, oh, there's and the, people the probably yeah. Don't, there's so. Portland Story Theater. There's okay. the Moth, which is a national thing. There's mm -hmm. um, uh, the the sex one. What's it called? Anyway, it's a true story. There's lots of like storytelling events. What playback does is actually take those stories and then create a piece of theater out of it right on the spot. That's that's where improv comes in, because we're not planning. We're taking like right. literally ten seconds to form a plan and then right. go right. Um, and is it a rep company? Like, do you have your four actors that you just love to work with, or or do you guys hold open auditions? There's 13 of us right now in the company um, that are regular members, and we mix it up. So we're all trained, you know, we've all been trained and trained on sort of these core concepts and structures and things like that that we use, and then we can just rotate in and out, you know. And everybody has their own style. They have their kind of thing that they do. The one of the important things about playback, I think, or one of the magical things that can happen is when you play with a group of people for a really long time, you know, you start to really know each other like an ensemble. And then that's kind of magic, you know, because you know, like... You know that they have your back. You know what they're You know they have your of. back. You know where their strengths yeah. are. You know that when they, you know, grab your wrist and pull you out on stage... Mm -hmm probably X, Y, yes. and Z is going to happen. Or if not, it doesn't matter because you've played so long together that you really trust yeah. each other and it's fine. Yeah. I have so many questions because of my improv background. Mm -hmm. So first, um, how do you edit scenes? I just I have to know. How do you edit? Like during if you're during, talking about edit in like the traditional like sweep or yeah, like what what do you, do you guys edit in any way? Like, on on the spot. I don't I don't Here's how playback and traditional improv differ. Mm -hmm. um, in my mind, this is my definition of the difference between the two. In traditional improv, you get a prompt at most, but then you really like, you, you, you're just bicycling, you're pedaling the bicycle as you go, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You're like inventing the plane as you fly. Um, in playback, we get all the raw material right up front. Because you don't make up anything. You're no. So it someone so has have... told us a story. Okay. They've told us a story. 
And so we have everything. Think, if you think of that as a script, that's the script. We, we, we get handed all the raw material how, up how front. How long is their story? That so they, then we just have to do stuff with it. Yeah. You know? how, how long of a story do they tell? You mean like time? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't like, know. I mean, usually, t- I mean, tellers will tell, it usually is like five minutes-ish. Seems so mystical, tellers. A little longer, a little shorter. It's playback talk, playback <laughs> Getting all the inside lingo here. So um, if, a, if a teller tells a story for five minutes, how long is the That's long now that, that I think about it. It's probably not that long. Like but you get, the, you yeah. get the idea. Enough how, to a few how, minutes, how right? How long is the playback of that story? And then the playback will be, you know, I don't know. We, we, don't, we don't try to, like, we don't try to hit it that way. It's, mm-hmm. it's really trying to pull the essential elements out of that story. And sometimes it'll be like a really small thing, but it's the important thing. And then it just gets blown up or minimized because it's blown up in the story or whatever. Like there's so many different things you can do with this material, with, with people's stories. It um, like it and it depends on what you're trying to, trying to do and what the and impact. What it's about. Yeah. yeah, what it's about. I'll give you an example. Like if someone is telling a story, and this is where we start to dip into this I, this concepts of drama therapy and and it starts to starts to sort of blend here if someone tells a story about a really um uh important moment in their life i don't know you know for example it could be like the birth of their child let's say and um they're telling it in such a way that they're not like maybe not bringing a lot of emotion to it. Or on the other hand, um, they're not bringing a lot of like facts to it. Like it's all just feelings and, and, and metaphor almost. Like we'll try to, we'll try to pull out what's, what's not there, you know, or try to put in what needs more of. So like you thinking about it like levers, you know, like what, what might need to come out more in this room for this teller? Like, do they, would they love being closer to that emotion? Would they love being taken a little bit further away? Um, Is this the time to push back on something politically? Is this a good moment to sing the whole thing? I Hmm. mean, we, is like so many different ways you can go about it. And it's really just a felt, it's really just a felt sense on our part. I mean, it just seems like you guys would require a healthy amount of intuition on how to navigate that and yep. also how to read that teller yep. and the audience at the same time. Like, is this going a wrong direction? Let's pull it back really quick yep. because we, we feel something yep. from them shifting. Yeah, and I guess back to the point about editing, that would be the editing that yeah. happens. We're just kind of reading everybody as we go in the teller mm-hmm. and then and then... You know, make pulling back on it, make adjustments, little tweaks, little things here, or there, or or change direction completely. Or right. you, so you guys have to be very uh, active and aware the entire time yeah. of what's wow. going on. Yeah, it sounds like a lot. Of How do you guys yeah. rehearse this? So we um, we we meet every every week for a few hours, um, and playback comes with a, a, a set of forms. They're called conventions. And they're just basically like templates you can put onto a story, right? And they're just forms. They're just theatrical structures. Like any other game, you know what I mean? Sort of the idea. So we'll practice those, and then we just, we tell stories. We just tell each other stories. And we and you, work them. And em, you play back your own And we stories. play them back. And we, nice. and we, you know, long forms, short forms. We really just tell each other stories. And then we'll play, like, improv games and stuff just to goof around and right. keep right. certain things sharp. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. um, wow. we're very, you know, we always, like, go back and look at a show and find... Do you record them? No, we don't record them. But, okay. you know, we'll go back and talk about, like, what was beautiful, what was... Yeah. And we're picky, you know what I mean? Because we're on the inside. We're like, oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. you know, and then we'll, like, work that little thing... But but what I like is that, I mean, they're always, every story is its own, like, ecosystem? 
yeah, its own like sacred universe that's unto itself. No, that's a really good word, actually. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's it really is like it takes a tremendous amount of, um, I think, like desire and courage on the part of a teller to do this. Wow. And then like they put it out, and then we we hold it, and yeah. we're very responsible with it, and and then it's over. Right. Like, I can't wait to see So it's this. kind of this beautiful this little, they're always different. I've never heard the same story would, twice. No, I've never would, played the same character twice in eight really? years, nine years, whatever Seems I've like been doing. reoccurring characters might come along. Uh, humans have reoccurring themes. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. like yeah. human beings, we do like a lot the of the same person, things. Yeah, the clown, yeah. You know. the, some of the some of the characters. Was that archetypes? Yeah, like, those, those, those show up over and over. The kinds of things that people go through show up over and over. Mm. Um, but that's really, you know, for the audience too, like sometimes you come to a playback show, you don't have to tell a story. I've never, ever, ever in all the time I've been doing this ever have had where no one would tell a story. Everyone does. Someone does. People want to tell their stories and they do. And, um, story is what connects us. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, yeah, so the audience, you, you might not be telling your story, but the comments we get afterward are things like, wow, I heard myself in there. Mm-hmm. Or that Which was, is what that was the cheapest, best anyway. therapy I ever had yeah. kind of a deal, you know. Well, so good with that. <laughs> you had mentioned drama therapy earlier. Right. Can, you, can you kind of elaborate on that for, for people who don't know what that is? Drama therapy is a... Is a a deep, deep well, but and actually, I can define that a little more elegantly than I can define playback. So, <laughs> I get to show this uh, show this part off. But uh, and I I can't take credit for it because it comes from the NADTA, which is the National Association for Drama Therapy in North America. But um, for me, Sarah came up with it. Anyway, thanks. <laughs> but if NADTA heard you say it, I didn't make it up. So, um, drama therapy is the I'm paraphrasing, but it's the deliberate use of theater and theater processes for and with therapeutic intent, right? So you're, you know, whatever, whatever it is. I mean, you you can use drama and processes of theater to get at uh, what might be coming up for a person therapeutically instead of just, you know, sit across from me and talk. I'm your therapist and you tell me. We can actually work with this material in, in a theatrical so context to, to mine it and get at what might be going on, what might be underneath. And because playback deals with true story, that's why sometimes it can feel, I think, therapeutic. Exactly. Because it's people's real material. Well, I was talking to some friends um, about this the other day. You know, we, we were sharing some stories and, uh, you know, like my family background is not everyone's family background, right? So it's a little bit, little bit more... Um, I don't know, challenging. So uh, one thing that I found is because of the acting, like say, you know, theoretically I had a parental figure that uh, wasn't wasn't always supportive, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we have similar trajectories. We have these parallels and you always have that fear, like, oh my gosh, am I going to turn out to be this person, right? Mm-hmm. But then, and it might not be specifically, I guess you tell me, this drama therapy thing, the act of having theater in my life is an active, cathartic thing, which kind of, if you think of it as like a pressure valve, l- allows me to let off steam every once in a while. So I feel like in terms of my active, I don't know, psychosis, mm-hmm. like it keeps me down here, whereas maybe someone who didn't have theater in their life and didn't have ways to vent that, it just builds and builds and builds, and, and there's no pressure. Really. Is that something similar, or is that... Uh, Something completely so, solid theory, and I think that it speaks. It's, it's probably true for any. It's probably true for any art therapy out there. That makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, why do human beings sit around the campfire and tell stories? Why do human beings draw stuff? Why do we sing songs? Why do we bang drums? Why do you know? What I mean? Why do we do yeah. any of this? Why it serves no like. On the face of these activities, there's no survival function. No, no. Right? Yeah. So why Theater's, do them? Theater is, like, when you think about what theater is, it is the most absurd thing. Like, a group of people will come and sit in a dark room for an extended period of time to watch another group of 
adults or people pretend. Yeah. yeah. And then we give awards like you pretended way better than that other person right. pretended. Uh-huh. Like it's right. strange. The 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 doing of it is is like silly and playful and lovely and wonderful and kind of absurd, but when you think about it like this is our the, this is one of the the oldest most critical in my opinion ways that we preserve ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We preserve our we preserve our yeah. our family stories, our national stories, yeah. our cultural stories yes. um, and it's not just about saying it it's about hearing it too it works both ways well yeah. also feeling it too it seems like that would be something that the audience would experience in a playback theater I know that each yep. a lot of these theaters that you go to whether it's anonymous whether it's an improv show whether all these things there's a certain element of feeling something that is magic and special in that moment that will right. never exist again. It's right. like this crystal, crystallized magic right. that when you walk out the door, you will never see it. And it's difficult to explain to other people who aren't in the room, Right. which mm. is possibly why you're having yep. that little... Yeah. yeah, it's a little hard. It sense. really is a little hard to explain. I, really I always end it with that. like, just come see a show. I don't know how else to like tell you. Because <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, like it's not like other stuff. Our next show is Saturday, June twenty third. And is it monthly? Is it? We do, yeah. We do monthly public shows. We're gonna stop for the summer, which we always do because it's Oregon and everybody wants to go play. <laughs> they um, do tend to do that. And then we'll be back in the fall. Um, yeah, and then we do all kind. We go anywhere. I mean, all you need for playback is, you know, people, some scarves, and people, Humans. and a couple of chairs. That's really it. It's like, like it's, there's no set, there's no like, there's no set, there's no props, there's no... It's such a fascinating concept to me. How did you get started in this particular vein of theater? Okay, so, gosh. Um, so, I don't, I, I can't even remember now, I guess it was maybe, I wish I could remember the exact year because I want to get it right, but it's like maybe eight years or something now. I, anyway, uh, I was directing a short play at... Um, a theater in Southeast, actually the theater space isn't there anymore, it's theater, theater, but um, uh, I was directing a short play, I needed a prop gun, I put it out on PDX backstage, I got a response from somebody, and he said, um, he said, call me up, I called him up, he's like, oh, I have the thing, and uh, blah, 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 we started talking, and then during that conversation, somehow drama therapy came up, because I was, like, right before that, I had discovered drama therapy I'm like what is this <laughs> and was just starting to like investigate that and get into that and then and he's like oh you got to talk to my wife and um so his wife gets on the phone her name is Jackie Paris and she started the company she had a company in Hawaii and then when they moved here um she started a company here and it just so happened during the course of that conversation she told me like because we were talking about drama therapy. She's like, well, if you like drama therapy and you're interested in that, you really ought to check out playback. And as a matter of fact, I'm having auditions. Why don't you come? And I'm like, okie doke. And so I <laughs> went and I got in the company. And that that's sort of the very Same short, goodness. condensed version of that. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I was in the company for, I, th- I, I want to say eight years. Somebody will hear this in the company and be like, it wasn't, Sarah. And I'll be like, okay, thank you. But I just can't remember at this moment. <laughs> but um, yeah, however long ago it was. And then I've been artistic director the past two years, so. How is uh, how is being artistic director like? How is uh, yeah, what how has life role? changed for you yeah, as AD? Um, well, I mean, I it it's more of a responsibility. I mean, just logistically, you know, like book the theater get the stuff you know just <laughs> yeah. the mm-hmm. just the managerial kinds of ins and outs of producing theater right there's there's that but um i i don't know i think i i, I really like looking at it from a from a wider perspective now um it's really fun to you know like see what's going on and then see like oh that's really good we'll keep working on that and building that or what's missing so there's kind of a bigger picture that I'm really digging Mm -hmm. on um I definitely feel the responsibility to the troop like you know I want to I want this to be good yeah Yeah. (laughs) I want this to be good I want it to be good for them and um how has uh 
how has all of this been therapeutic for you? Has it? Wow. <laughs> yeah, it has. And I, so I think I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm, I'm right smack in the middle of um, getting a master's in social work at Portland State, and I'm doing a clinical track. And I've, I've, when I think about it up to this point, sorry, Portland State, but honestly, my best clinical training so far has been playback. Like you asked about auditions earlier. The thing that I really, really, the thing that a playback actor really, really needs to have, I can't teach. And that is the skill of very deep, intuitive listening. Mm -hmm. And then cultivating the skills that that happens over time you can cultivate those skills but but a really good playback actor in my mind can take the skill set of playback and just be able to match that moment to moment to moment through really deep intuitive listening to serve that story and serve serve that teller and i can't teach that kind of listening no. Do you have Do you know any I mean? tips on, on listening for actors? Like, what was that? Do you have any tips? I fell for it. Oh, you walked right into that. I walked into one, so I had to set one up for you. That's okay. okay. Say it again. I'm listening now. I'm just Do kidding. you have um, any tips on um, listening? Listening, for, like how to read an audience. If you're not someone who has a natural, intuitive, uh, kind of an empathetic feeler out there, how would you coach someone, maybe not for your particular company, but in general as an actor who maybe has to work and interact with an audience? Or even as a just sensor, listening or, to your other actors on stage, just right. listening in general. Yeah. I don't know that I would, um, I don't know that I would try to, I don't know that I would try to cultivate that skill in a theater. I think I would try to cultivate that skill a little better in life mm -hmm. and then translate it. So. I might tell someone, you know, get out there and talk to people. Um, notice, notice things about yourself. When you're in a conversation with someone, are you, are you listening to them or are you waiting for your turn to talk? Um, you know, take a path you don't always take. Have a conversation with someone you might not, um, you know, Lean, lean into something that makes you uncomfortable in what you're hearing someone say. Um, and I might encourage that, I, I might have just encouraged building that kind of a practice in life. Because hmm. then you can bring that, you know, you can bring that to the stage. But that, that now, you're, now you're asking about my belief structure too. Like I don't, I don't really think that, I don't personally believe that we become different animals when we're on a stage versus the rest of our life. I mean, I think we bring ourselves to it, right? right. Whatever we're doing, if it's a script, if it's mm -hmm. an improv show, I mean, you bring yourself. So the more you, you know, the more you're curious in the world and, and can do some sharing, really authentic sharing, and the more you can listen really deeply in the world, you'll bring that. You'll bring that to the stage. That's really cool. It sounds like playback theater is like the literal version of storytelling. Like the... Like, no, not, not we're going to put on this play and it's going to tell a story. You will tell a story and then we will tell the story with our bodies. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, it's. I've never I, heard I, of it before, so it's. Yeah, I'm, I can't. I'm reeling I really like in all this time, I mean, and in, in our, our previous artistic director, Jackie, who trained me, I mean, she's been doing it for, I don't even know how long now, 20 years maybe? I forget. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Never done the same play twice. Never done the same scene twice. Never played mm. the same character twice. Because everybody, everybody is unique and everybody's story is their own and it's really different every time. It's, yeah. it's amazing. I, I'm like, I'm just completely in love with it. And it busts me wide open. I mean, there's nothing, there's no, nothing I do that gets close to just being in that space, um, it's really, uh, it, yeah, it's really amazing. That's great. I want to be, uh, so June 23rd, where is it? So June 23rd, we're performing at a studio called Resound Northwest. And Resound Northwest is um, a music studio, voice and singing. The owner of Resound is actually a company member of Playback. 
And so we're performing in his space. What? And that is at 1532 Southwest Jefferson Street. I've wrote it so many times on Facebook that it's in my memory now. <laughs> Show is at 7, and it's pay what you can, cash your card at the door. Yeah. How do people uh, interact with you guys online or connect with you for more info? Uh, so we have a website, which is playbacktheaterpdx.com. We have a Facebook page. Um, and I think it's just Playback PDX. I can't remember our handle. Um, I should, but I don't. <laughs> I just so, can't remember it. Anyway. Yeah, uh, I don't look at it because I log in, you know, and I'm doing stuff, yeah, and I'm yeah. not looking at that. But anyway. Um, yeah, so that though those are those are the two ways that we're online and in the world. Um, but what I like to say is like what I really hope people will do and, and they do is come to a show and then afterward come come talk to us. Like come face to face and share what you thought and, and tell us what you think and um, cause that's really that's really the best. You know, and that, mm. yeah, that was one of your um, your advice uh, that you, one of the um, Things you had said to us uh, in, in our initial interview questions, uh, we asked, "How do you? What's the best way to market a show?" And you said, uh, "Speak to f- people face to face, and then thank them face to face when they come, yeah. and build that relationship." Yep, mm-hmm. old and school, yeah. Willie Loman stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, maybe it's true. maybe it's me uh, and showing my age a little bit, but I mean, yeah. I I prefer that. And I really do think that works best. And when I've kept some some data on this for data very or for playback very informally. That's the way people find out about us. Yeah. They talk to a company member who, like, explains it really well or really badly, but in any case, they spark some interest <laughs> and they come to a show and they're like, oh, that's what that is. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you tell more people. Tell more people. So. We're going to tell a bunch of people. Yeah. We're going to tell all We're telling the people. them now. Tell all the people. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. What a good uh, conversation. We really are excited to see the show. So grateful um, that you had me on. On June 23rd. Woohoo! At the... Uh, at the... Resound Northwest. Northwest. Yeah, it's the studio yeah. space. Yeah. That's... You, you know, if you guys don't remember at this point, you okay. can rewind right. Easy does like it two whoa, minutes. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> you have the technology, <laughs> people. It's technology. This isn't live. My best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank Thanks, Sarah, you. so much. Thank you. And that's our show. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you to Sarah McWilliams for taking the time to be interviewed on the podcast. We really want to encourage you to check out their next show, which is Saturday, June 23rd at Resound Northwest in Portland, Oregon. For more information, you can visit their Facebook page or go to www.playbacktheaterpdx.com. If you like what we're doing and if you've enjoyed this episode, please let us know by giving us a positive review on Facebook or iTunes. If you'd like to connect with us personally and uh, tell us that we need to interview a specific theater company or talk about a specific topic, let us know by dropping us an email at communitytheaterheroes at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you guys. Make sure to tune in next week because we have a really special episode that we cannot wait to drop on you guys. 